Welcome friends, myself Shams Raza, program in charge of IGNU Sensory Aware Center. Uh, here I am going to give a presentation on system analysis and design, the course code MCS14. This course is included uh, in our IGNU MCA first semester and BCA third semester. The overall course provides an insight to the learners for understanding the systems, restructuring them, redesigning them and somehow generating or creating the information systems by replacing the manual systems. Let us go in details of this course with the slides. Systems as we know is a productive entity. Everywhere you see the systems which are functioning to provide some kind of services. So therefore for every system there is a central objective or purpose for which it is constructed or developed and there is some uh, recipient or user of the systems who are receiving the services of this system. So far, uh, a structure of a system can be visualized as integration of components. The system is made up of uh, components and these are interrelated components. And of course, these components are assembled within a boundary and the functioning of the components are the central objective of the system. So far, uh, partitioning of the components, if we uh, see that every system is made up of some larger components called subsystems and further these larger components are decomposed into modules and the modules are further break up into the smallest unit of the system that is the functions which is integration of procedure and tools. Now comes uh, regarding what are the basic elements of a system. Number one component as you have seen multiple components which are interrelated are integrated to form a system. Interrelationship that is the integration of the components working together. Boundary under which system is constructed, assembled and made operational. That is the boundary of the system. So outside of the boundary is the environment for which the system is working. Purpose is the objective of the system. Is the basic uh, objectivity or services for which the system is made and made operational. System user, the recipient of services of the systems. Environment, definitely the systems are uh, made, installed and made operational uh, within some environment. Interfaces, these are the means of uh, transferring, it's, uh, interacting, means of interacting the systems from environment. Using interfaces, system can interact from the environment. Inputs, whatever system receive from the environment using an interface is input and output whatever system delivers from the system to the environment using the interface that is output and constraints are various procedure and rules and regulation uh, which are imposed on the system for its functioning. This is a diagram which is showing uh, the systems component, its boundary, environment, as well as the interface. As you see the arrow headed lines indicating the interface, the inputs being received from the environment and output is being delivered to the environment. And the system component like two components are visible now, processor and controller, they are interrelated, they are working together to fulfill the requirement of the system. Now, components of information system. 
very first thing is data when we talk about information system that is a computer based system and uh, the components of computer based system is a very essential uh, component of such information system will be data what is data whatever raw fact and figure being fed to information system is data related to people related to objects or events whatever may be whichever uh, data we want to process through the system information uh, that is the output of the system when the system process the given data and generate the result in a desired format then this uh, result is treated as information which is always delivered by a system or information system or information processing system then data flow is basically the movement of data or information inside the system from one component to another component of the system that is called data flow which is indicated using arrow headed lines in the design of information systems process process are the activity of the system which is responsible to transform data into information that means process is the basic activity which uh, finally perform the objectivity of the system and make enable uh, make available result to the user information system analysis and design basically information system analysis and design is uh, a process for designing development testing and implementation of information system and this is a very complex challenging stimulating process but this is organizational process that means this process conducted or carried out by the organization uh, by its own human resources or sometime by outsourcing it with external professional experts of system development team uh, but uh, all the way it requires a team effort of business people and system professional experts who are responsible for designing of information system so information system is always a part of organizational function types of system there are natural system and man made system so these types of system listed here we mean man made system in which the formal system that is the systems which are already predefined already existing and informal systems the systems which are created during disaster or exigencies which are not predefined or exist earlier which are defined and immediately implemented and used these are informal system physical systems are the systems which exist physically like automobile and civil engineering products or systems abstract systems are logical system like syllabus theory drawing designs and open system means every system of the real world is an open system which means the system which uh, interact with its environment and closed systems which doesn't interact with its environment directly but it works with a confinement that such like uh, we call the embedded systems which are used in uh, various automobile uh, systems and mechanical systems and electrical system uh, in which these embedded systems works within some uh, different environment life support systems like pacemakers uh, implemented inside the body of the persons these systems are uh, closed in that sense because it doesn't interact with the external environment but it works inside the body environment then manual systems every system is manual in its form and automated when it is converted into information system it becomes automated system or computer based system so these are the various types of systems now comes about uh, what are the basic information systems which can be made implemented operated or which can be designed and developed distributed system the systems which have uh, distributed architecture 
like multinational company or national company which are having head offices regional offices and branch offices like our ignu is also a distributed system as you see they headquarter in maidangadi then regional center centers in every state and within the regional center there are study centers real time system we call real time online system which provides immediate response for the given inputs such as as you see the online inquiries or you see the online processing systems such as uh, railway reservation you can see as you submit you get the output immediately transaction processing systems every business system wherever transactions are going on this is transaction processing system so mostly all the business systems are comes under transaction processing uh, system and this business system includes the hospitals the schools colleges educations as well as trade and business everything then uh, there is decision support and management information basically transaction processing system whenever it is designed and implemented automatically with tps there is an mis what is this this is a system which collect the data from transaction processing system and generate some information or reportings for the top management and these uh, generated information or reportings used by decision support system which is implemented at the top of mis so these three are integrated at the bottom line it is transaction processing above the tps it is mis and above the mis it is dss what is dss their responsibility to is to make policies make decision for the benefit of the organizational or business interest expert systems are the systems which we call which are basically uh, behave like human intellect or we can say the human intellect is transformed into machine level and these machine act as uh, human intellect such as medical analysis you can see uh, ecg machines and uh, echocardiography machines ultrasonography machines these are uh, a kind of uh, artificial intelligent machines so these machines are having expert systems which are in combination of devices and softwares intelligent softwares system development approach how systems can be developed there is a very old approach which we call the traditional that is called sdlc system development life cycle this old system development life cycle have certain step wise activities uh, by performing these step wise activity information systems are being developed and implemented like analysis design and then testing implementation and maintenance the same uh, sdlc is, is still carried out with certain amendments or certain modification such as a structured analysis and design uh, again the phases are same but uh, new tools are added in the methodologies like uh, structured analysis and design tools are dfd Uh, program flow diagrams decision tree and uh, decision tables hipo chart structure charts and other tools are case tools so but uh, this structured analysis and design again include the same phases like analysis design testing implementation and uh, maintenance then again this uh, advanced uh, version of sdlc under structured analysis uh, provide some added features like it helps to track the system forward tracking and backward tracking for enhancement and optimization of the system so it provides easy means for tracking of the systems then uh, with the advancement of uh, uh, we call uh, object oriented paradigm there is object oriented analysis and design again the life cycle phases are remain same that means sdlc is also there that is analysis design implementation but difference is that uh, for various reason here uh, the tools being used are 
according to object oriented paradigm or methodology these are tools uh, mainly used in object oriented analysis and design are uml such as case tool we call use case tool an activity diagram class diagram object diagram mainly for the design of this system and then for coding tool object oriented language are used for this uh, paradigm so this is an another approach for uh, the uh, system development and design but still the phases and activity steps are remain same that is analysis design implementation etc then we have some models these models are designed that uh, if you are using object oriented or a structured analysis whatever approach you are using uh, if the project which you are going to uh, develop is having some complexity at the beginning and you cannot perform analysis easily or analysis is not getting clear then there is a prototyping model which can help you that you can develop a simulation of the real system with minimum minimum information of requirement analysis and by implementing this prototype you gradually enhance it gradually modify it update it and finally you can convert it into a complete system so there is one model another model is joint application development whenever the projects are critical enough and they need that uh, development team alone uh, may create a lot of bugs or errors or faults in the system and which will be revealed very late if the team is continuously working alone so it is better in such project we should include the customer team or the business people so such uh, projects or uh, such type of model where uh, sdlc in development life cycle phases or activity include a team which is having the members from the organization manager management people as well as experts uh, professional development uh, people so this is a joint application development uh, result a full proof system with minimum time system development approaches may uh, next uh, uh, like uh, rapid application development this is also one of the model suppose a system is having a uh, large enough then the whole system can be distributed or partition into four sub systems and due to any reason if the customer demands that they have a time constraint they want the whole system to be developed within 30 days only but uh, estimates estimates shows that uh, the one sub system can be developed only in 30 days in such a case uh, this model can be applied what it do uh, it divide the system in four sub systems and apply four parallel team in each sub system so every team will completes its sub system within 30 days and ultimately they integrate the whole system so with minimum time the complete system can be designed developed and implemented this is called rapid application development model then the information system design development is a highly responsible activity and for which uh, from the organization as well as from the development team one person is assigned uh, this uh, critical and responsible sensitive activity who is known as system analyst so he has uh, some role and he has some duties let us see the role the role of system analyst as a change agent because the organizational analyst the business analyst they identify that whether they need a information system they need a new system so they find it out they they are investigator and monitor because they investigate the requirement of the systems from the existing systems and they monitor the existing system for possible faults architect they propose a new model for changing the system psychologists they understand the people very well and made them understand for the new changes and new requirements motivator whenever new system is accepted and going to be implemented then motivate the people to work with the new system without any fear and without any hesitation normally people objects uh, for the change in the system for which they are already habitual for many years so here it uh, help them this analyst help them to use and make ready 
to use the new system then intermediary he plays a role of intermediary between top management and employees if there is any conflict and he resolve it and made agree to each other the duty is defining the requirement definitely for the new systems requirement it is their duty that he define it setting priority if he propose uh, more than two three uh, alternative system then he should uh, set up a priority list that which new system has to be first of all taken in in considerations then uh, analysis and evaluation thereafter he pre uh, present a complete justification and planning of the uh, proposed system so that top management can be convinced to approve the system solving the problem he uh, uh, necessarily provide a, a complete solution plan for the new system that whatever the faults in existing can be removed using the new plan that is the solution he proposed with a alternative system and prepare the functional specification that what the new system supposed to be performed after its implementation that is also predicted by him then designing the system he proposed a model as an architect of course and evaluating the system whenever the system is going on under development or finally completed he is the person from the uh, business to evaluate and uh, approve that the system is made up accordingly or we call he is uh, he work as a auditor at that time this is the system development life cycle and what is this this is uh, the various steps which requires for the design development implementation of any information system as you see the very first one is project identification and selection second is uh, project initiation and planning and then development cycle rotates from analysis to maintenance like analysis there after design there after development and after that testing and then implementation or after implementation it is post implementation review or maintenance which is carried out so sdlc is basically a uh, integration of these number of step wise activity which has to be required for designing development implementation of any information system let us go a little detail about all these phases uh like re, uh, analysis we call that is called requirement analysis uh analysis uh, we call uh, let us begin from project identification and selection so project identification and selection as you know as a analyst from the business he identify the requirement of a new information system into their existing business system to optimize it to make it uh, profitable to enhance the productivity various ways so he uh, proposed some uh, of the system by identifying and of course set up a priority that uh, which new proposal has to be taken seriously and very fast then project initiation planning here again the analyst properly make a feasibility justification report for the new proposed system to convince the top managements and uh, with their approval they initiate the new system uh, development or new systems uh, design so this initiation and planning is provided after selecting a project and for uh, this initiation the analyst has to submit a feasibility justification report that he has to justify that how it is beneficial for the organization how it is in the interest of the organization then the analysis this is called requirement analysis here the uh, team find out all the possible requirement of the new system or proposed information system and uh, these are normally functional non functional requirements and they collect the requirement then verify the requirement and finally they specify the requirement in a document which is called system requirement specification document for uh, collecting this uh, requirement uh, and uh, organizing analyzing and presenting and verifying uh, the uh, the initial uh, activity is collecting this requirement uh, which is called they use a technique 
that is fact finding techniques that uh, is helpful for requirement analysis then feasibility justification is presented uh, for initiation of the project in the four uh, different heads technical feasibility that means the new system will be technically feasible for the organization and the location where it is functioning that means technical support will remain continue if the system breakdowns operational feasibility that organizational employee will not be replaced they may be trained to operate the new system and they will be able to use the new system economic feasibility is the vital one it provides a cost benefit analysis that the new system will be ultimately beneficial for the organizational interest though it is a big expenses at the time of implementation legal feasibility that it should not violate any uh, legal bindings to the organizational uh, business law uh, with this new information system that feasibility also has to be uh, justified and the project scheduling is also part of the planning they prepare a complete schedule using a bar chart or jan chart tools that uh, which month will be done uh, uh, will be used for what activity and finally how the project will be concluded or implemented or completed so uh, these are the part of uh, working on sdlc they have to go for this so requirement analysis uh, we call then uh, for requirement analysis uh, they have to Uh, go in this process requirement specification uh, include a lot of activity first of all the system requirement has to be pointed out then requirement gathering using fact finding techniques then requirement analysis then describing these requirement in roughly and then it is verified with the customer or the business people again if they change it it has to be validated and if the verification accept the description then it become system requirement specification in this case uh, the fact finding technique used for requirement gathering which is very important and uh, what is fact finding techniques like record review that means uh, for collecting the requirement they go to the system Uh, to the business and uh, they collect a copy of all kind of forms registers uh, received books and everything whatever document being used for operating the business then uh, on site observation the development team stays in the business for one or two or three day and observe the system how it is working after these they prepare some uh, knowledge of the requirement they describe some of the requirement and then make a list of interview that uh, where they still need some more information so make a list of interview and go to the business people and ask them for more detail and still if there is some confusions then make a questionnaire make make the questionnaire uh, such as uh, in in terms of yes and no so that confusion can be uh boiled it can be uh, concluded so this questionnaire will be distributed to the business people and ask them to fill up and once it is completed then requirement can be uh, gathered with this methodology they collect the requirement and after collecting the requirement they analyze and uh, within their laboratory and uh, prepare a description of the requirement that these are the requirement of the system then again uh, go to the customer or the business people and verify it once they make it okay then the system requirement specification is completed so this is the uh, process of analysis and under analysis these things are done then design logical design means design of the system is uh, done and design uh, normally means uh, translating the specifications that means whatever whatever specification document is prepared uh, from the srs document they prepare a graphical uh, pictorial uh, representation of the system whatever specification written in words they translate into diagrammatic form that is called design of the systems which is always in uh, two level that is high level design and low level design we will go in detail in the coming slides 
then uh, physical design is definitely development or construction in our information system case it is coding the, on the base of design on the basis of srs the language is adopted uh, and the codes line of codes are prepared and compiled and integrated to make the system implementation once the code is ready it is tested first of all and after testing is okay then it is deployed or installed and made operational maintenance is a phase that uh, once system is made operational then they go for uh, evaluating the system getting the feedback for a period of one year say and uh, after getting the feedback for changes in the system they go and recycle the whole process of system development life cycle by means of maintenance they modify they update they enhance the system so this is the requirement we have and this is a, a format of requirement document when the srs is finalized and it is uh, written accepted then it has written point wise and very details are written in different points under different headings and that helps the programmers while they are writing the line of code for the systems and then fact finding technique we have already seen the system design as we say uh, for design we have two uh, things one is design methods or principles another is uh, design characteristics or properties the properties are basically uh, are the criteria for deciding the design is a good design is a complete design is a acceptable design or not so like verifiability if the design uh, should be verifiable that means functionality inside the designs can be verified or a specification can be verified in the design traceability any particular point of functionality can be traced in the design which is available in the srs completeness design reflect the complete srs whatever specifications consistency that means design is free from any ambiguity that means uh, whatever uh, uh, things are presented in the designs are always consistent no confusion efficiency that means it is technically efficient for the developers at the same time simplicity it should be simple enough to be viewed and uh, verified by the customer and the non technical people then design methods the uh, design methods or principles are basically top down and bottom first of all uh, it is taken for designing the model of the systems we call the dynamic and uh, the static model using top down approach and uh, top down approach help us a system to partition into its a smallest unit from top to down by breaking it into multiple components this partitioning is done using top down approach based on a design uh, method which is called cohesion what is cohesion that uh, systems should be uh, partition Sh system should be uh, break up into a number of components uh, on the basis that each component should be cohesive so identifying the cohesive component from the system and partitioning partitioning it into separate components that is the basis of cohesion and the cohesion means the amount of autonomy that means the in independency of a component by which it is not dependent to any other component for its functionality that is cohesion that's autonomy so top down break up of the system we do on the basis of autonomous component that's why system is partition into subsystems all the subsystems are cohesive component then subsystems are break up into module again the modules are cohesive and the functions are break up from the module each function is a cohesive itself but coupled with the module then uh, uh, when the systems models are prepared that is a static model and the dynamic model on the basis of top down approach using the cohesive cohesive Uh, techniques or cohesion technique once we uh, start uh, developing the system 
integrating the system assembling the system then we go bottom up approach like at the bottom level the smallest unit functions are created developed and tested now they integrated to the module from bottom to up and this is done using a technique coupling that means those functions coupling means the amount of dependency of one component of the system to other component of the system for its functionality that is coupling so on the basis of coupling all the required functions of a module which are coupled with the module are integrated similarly all the module of a subsystems are integrated with the subsystem on the basis of coupling and this is done bottom up approach from bottom to top we go for constructing of the system then comes uh, the design category uh, we have two level of design high level design and low level or detailed design in high level design we have uh, two or three model that is called the dynamic model static model and data model dynamic model is normally presented uh, for a structured uh, design we use the tool for dynamic model that is data flow diagram and uh, static model is prepared using a structure chart or hipo then uh, for data model we use entity relationship diagram what are these model actually uh, the structure of the system is depicted using static model that is using a structure chart that how system is assembled or configured what is the configuration but uh, if the system is developed and is started functioning so when it will be functioning how it will looks while in running status and to give a, a view of a running system we need a dynamic model which is data flow diagram and this data flow diagram is presented with uh, uh every function of the system that uh, how data is being transferred to multiple function and converted into information or required results but the structure chart shows that at the top level the system next to it is subsystem and next to it is modules at the bottom line it is function or functional unit which is the smallest unit of the system so it reflect the structure configuration of the system data model uh, reflect the uh, complete data set of the system that means the database of the system are presented using a tool which is called entity relationship diagram which include each and every data and their detail which is being used by the system for object oriented design the uml category tools are there that is use case diagram activity diagram class and object diagram again these diagram reflect same things like use case diagram used for static model in place of a structure chart activity diagram used for dynamic model in place of dfd class and object diagrams are basically the process diagram but the data model in object oriented design is also erd so it doesn't change the tool remains that the data dictionary is a, a presentation in design that related to is dynamic model related to static model related to data model the details are is stored in a index like structure that is called data structure or data dictionary which records the details of the abbreviated terms and words used inside the various design that is called data dictionary is tool for development these are softwares which help us to automate the process of analysis design sometime coding and testing so in place of doing manually if we want to do it using a software then these softwares are known as case tools computer aided system engineering tool or computer aided software engineering tool let us see uh this is the dynamic model data flow diagram as you see the data flow diagram depicts the running status of the system that how system is working the complete functionality is depicted 
and it can be uh, drawn, it can be made into multiple le level. Like if you want to uh, give a glimpse of a uh, very abstracted uh, system, uh, then you can use uh, a single bubble. In data flow diagram, the geometrical figure used to represent various things like uh, rectangles are used for entity. That means uh, the uh, originating uh, sources of the process uh, which are normally from the environments like uh, supplier, customer as you said these are the P entity or the sources of system operations. Then uh, bubbles or circles represent the process, various process that is the components of the systems. Arrow headed lines depict the data flow that is the flow of data or information within the system from component to component and open ended rectangles reflect the database that means the register the files which has to be uh, used by the processes for uh, retrieving some information or sometime writing some information as storing information so these are the uh, data flow diagrams uh, components uh, by which uh, dfd can be made but uh, DFD can be made in multiple level as I said if you make it zero level then it will show a very abstracted uh, view of the system having only one bubble one process showing all the possible input to the system and possible output of the system then if you break into level two then it is subsystem level that means the processes of subsystem will be highlighted and if you break up into level 3 then it is module level it will be depicted and if you break up into level 4 then all the function level can be depicted in the diagram so as much deep level you go the detail functioning can be available on the dfd as much top level you will go it will be abstracted view of the system this is a static model of a structured uh, tool that is a structure chart as you see the system is partitioned into subsystems in the first line in the second line it is partitioned into modules if the subsystems have module otherwise the subsystem and module will be same and then below that the function if the module is having some function otherwise modules will be treated as functions so this is the way how a structure of the system can be modeled and this will be used for bottom-up uh, integration of the components using coupling and then uh, for the information system we design the menu or home page and the links uh, using this uh, structural view that from where which subsystem will open from where which module can be called or from where which function can be called this is the data model we call entity relationship diagram like in rectangle it reflect the entity that means the table names in which data is stored related the uh, particular objects and then uh, around the rectangle or entity their attribute that means the column name of the tables and uh, diamond shape is reflecting the participation of the entity with each other that is called transaction so transactions are recorded with diamond shape so every diamond shape become transaction table and rectangle become a master table so this way the database is constructed use case diagram sample is given for uh, if you are using a static model for object oriented design then use case uh, diagram is static model uh, in place of a structure chart and uh, if you are using a dynamic model in object oriented design then in place of DFD it is activity diagram which reflect that how system will work when it will be implemented class diagram is drawn from the use case or every use case classes are derived subclasses are derived and then uh, for each classes the objects are uh, generated and the object diagram is de de depicted data dictionary uh, as i said is a uh, reference index for various things like for data flow diagram for a structures chart that means a static model dynamic models and erd data models 
when we uh, designs all these model using diagram uh, we write very uh, abbreviated terms inside the diagram and the detail of these terms are listed in a separate index which is called data dictionary as you see the sample this is a data dictionary for data flow diagram in data flow diagram as the master files are written employee uh, and uh, employee master and then uh, employee timeline or a transaction file we can say so it is detailed on the right hand side as data structure so this right hand side content is called data dictionary and this can be created for SRS this can be created for uh, data flow diagram can be created for a structure chart this can be created for ERD entity relationship times for that means data model static model dynamic model or even software requirement specification that that will include uh, each and every detail of short and abbreviated terms used inside these designs or specifications so this is the concept of data dictionary and as i said the case tools are software which can automate the process of sdlc we can use it if we want to use it so these are divided into upper case tool and lower case tool what it means the case tools which are used for planning analysis and design these are upper case tool and lower case tools are implementation testing maintenance these are lower case tool so how it works if you wanted to know like uh, analysis case tool will ask you to feed the requirements whatever requirement you have gathered you feed it into analysis tool and this tool will automatically generate a SRS document requirement specification document similarly if you feed the SRS to the design tool then it will be automatically generate the designs the dynamic and static model. so this kind of software is case tool uh, this is a sample screen of a case tool software which is an object oriented design case tool and it helps to generate the use case diagram, acti activity diagram, class diagram, object diagram can be met using this case tool. Then uh, uh, so far we are talking about high level uh, design mm -hmm. but uh, now it is time for low level design. What is low level design? If you say, uh, if you see the structure chart at the bottom line it is functions. So when we get uh, each and every function of the system, say 12 or 30 or 40 or 60 function, then each function has to be designed exclusively for these five components. That means every function has some input, it will deliver some output, the function has some process logic, the function will use some data and the function can be called from some menu or some menu that is interface so that's why we need input design output design process design data design and interface design so how these design has to be made and this has to be made for all the function not for one function but it will remain uniform these five component for every function and suppose you will be using five pages for one function and your project is having uh, 50 function that means uh, you will be using uh, 250 pages for detailed design of the functions so let us see how these five components can be designed if we want to design input that means how input to the function can be accepted so this is called form design or input design the screen look that how a screen will accept the input data this is called input design or also known as form design then uh, output normally functions generate output results so these output format has to be designed that what format of report will be generated using this function and these are like a sample if you see your grade card your mark sheet your certificates uh, your fee receipts uh, these are uh, may be considered as output design in, uh, in uh, railway reservation you see the tickets given to you that is also an output so that layout is also an output design or input design so this has to be designed then the process design is the process logic design for that we need flow charts we have to design the flow chart that how this process will begin how it will compute and how it will convert the information or deliver the result from where it will start and from where it will stop so this is the 
process design that is a flow chart normally then data design means this function will be using data from databases and the da databases is having tables so whatever table this function is calling or using that table a schema that table a structure has to be given as a data design for each function if the function is using one table like customer table then only this table will be given it will be using two table order and customer then these two and if we will be using all the four table then all the four table design has to be given so this is the data design for each function according to requirement of the function table has to be depicted here that is called a schema user interface design or interface design we call uh, when the information system is installed and made operational the software like system they have some menu as you see the ms of if you are using the word and excel powerpoint you see the menu is there then tools bar what is this this is the user interface that how you can open a file how you can save a file or any activity any function you want to perform so which function can be activated from which link of the interface that is the menu button or graphical user interface icons so this is the user interface design then uh, after designing is completed the coding is done and once coding is done the system almost is ready now it has to go for testing and testing means verifications and validations verification means the testing will check the functionality of the system according to requirement specification and according to this design and if it will find that everything is working as per a specification then it will accept the system and release for implementation but if it finds any errors any fault then it will ask for validation then uh, the code again has to be changed modified and again uh, the complete code executable codes has to be given for testing and they will again verify so once it is accepted then uh, error free then it is uh, given for implementation otherwise this testing cycle goes on now the uh, system testing are done into multiple levels as you recall when the smallest units are developed the function units are developed each unit are developed individually so they are tested individually this is called unit level testing then with bottom up approach on the basis of coupling we start integrating these functions into modules so while integration by adding one by one functions we repeatedly test this is called integration testing and when all the components are integrated system is assembled then overall system is tested and it is tested at two places at the developer laboratory when it is tested it is called alpha testing and when it is tested uh, at the customer site it is called acceptance testing or beta testing so these are the four levels of testing then there are testing methodologies that means methods mainly two black box testing and white box we say when the system is tested randomly without going in detail of its specification and design simply giving some input and matching the output with the given input this is called black box test but when the system is tested thoroughly with the detail of a specification and design and each and every functions are tested then thorough testing is known as white box testing sometime both type of testing are applied on the system like users are test uh, testing the system using black box testing method while the developers when they are testing in le in their laboratory they are performing the white box testing then implementation uh, have different methods like uh, uh, system can be implemented by a di uh, direct uh, change or direct implementation in which the old system suddenly is stopped and new system suddenly implemented which is not very good is a risky one then there is a parallel implementation this is very good 
for a certain period of time both the system parallelly runs and when the new system is found uh, absolutely fault free optimum then uh, old systems are uh, stops then it is a uh, pilot uh, implementation when we call that uh, one complete uh, module of uh, new systems are implemented by closing that module of old system and when it is running after some time then second module are implemented and then third and n number of module so one module which is firstly implemented it play a pilot role in this implementation then phased uh, impl implementation phased manner or phased implementation is also like pilot implementation but difference is that in phased implementation uh, the new component and old components uh, are implemented by marking a small unit of new component and uh, closing a small unit of old components and gradually the new components are added and old components are winded up phase wise this is called phase implementation so any method of implementation can be selected according the suitability of your requirement then comes uh, need of a documentation in uh, system development or information system design and development because uh, this is a scientific process so there is a need of documentation we cannot do everything conceptually so in sdlc every phase have some activity and whenever this phase is completed a document is delivered by that phase which is the outcome of this phase like uh, so that's why we need document for various activity and various phases of sdlc the process of documentations are tools of documentations uh, like SRS documentation tool is the SRS format or SRS standard given by standard institutions and uh, then design uh, document is design tools as you have seen uh, like uh, structure chart, DFD, use case diagrams and then we have uh, coding documents for which uh, we will be using the uh, coding language or programming languages which are the tool for coding document or line of code then testing document will include uh, testing uh, methods and testing plans testing schedule testing reports test cases all this implementation document will be having a implementation plan which is called deployment diagram then installation uh, document which is called system configurations document then uh, or training document operational document staff training or user manuals these are the implementation documents then we have <coughs> maintenance document which is uh, purely uh, feedback recording scroll which will record the feedback or deviation of the system or possible errors of the system for changing and maintaining the system after a certain period of the maintenance. <clears throat> so implementation as you already aware that it includes testing, installation, training and deployments. Then maintenance uh, normally done. Uh, if we have errors, we do the corrective maintenance and if the process uh, degrading is there, performance is degrading, then perfective maintenance is used. If new, new functions to be added to the system, then adaptive maintenance is carried out. Then there is a system audit. As we said in earlier, when the system is completed, it is audited according to sanctions or approval. Otherwise, the transaction of the systems, when it is running, the transactions are also audited that the transactions are performing exactly as I specified. And uh, concurrent audit means the auditing can be done during life cycle model also. When SRS is being prepared, the SRS can be audited. When design is being, uh, being prepared, then design can be audited as a concurrent audit. Similarly, computer assisted audit concept is that uh, we can use there are tools, case tools which are called auditing tool which can be connected with the newly developed system and it will generate the reports if there is any discrepancy or fault they will generate uh, the audit reports 
security uh, normally life cycle phases during life cycle phases the project control is done that is during SRS during design if any deviation degradation is happening that has to be risk analysis and if it is identified they have to be risk managed so that uh, control of the project is done using risk analysis and risk management so that the project should not compromise any degradation or poor quality then the virus and recovery in this case is uh, once the system is implemented then um, it is provided uh, data level security using antivirus uh, software firewalls so that uh, database or system cannot be hacked or damaged internally and backup and recovery is given for database security so periodical backup can recover the database in case of any crashes MIS again is uh, the same thing we told already that whenever a TPS is developed on the top of TPS there is MIS which is responsible for generating important information for DSS decision and support systems and this MIS normally use people technology and generate relevant information for decision making or for the decision support systems so this is all for this block at this moment hope you have uh, enjoyed this uh, session you can send me feedback or your queries on the mail id given on the slide thank you